you were under the age of 18, a student, you just left secondary school yes. and you hadn't yet gotten into the university. Yes. You say something happened to you, yeah? Something, something very painful, you know, beyond painful. Can you sh tell us what that is? Tell me what that is. It's, um, I have to say, like, this is the first time I'm going to be coming out, like, public to discuss this yeah. with um, someone. Yeah. It's only my family members and definitely my husband that knows about it. Um, okay. Um, mm. Take your time. I was still in secondary school and um, I came home. Meanwhile, then I was staying in Ilori with my parents. I was born in Ilori. Right. You know, I went to my primary school in Ilori, but my secondary school, I went to Gifted School Academy in Suleja. Right. This was still in Kwara? Both, both no. Suleja and Ilori in Kwara? No, Suleja is Niger State, Niger State. close to Abuja. Right. So, um, I returned home for a particular holiday, mm -hmm. and then my sisters, they all told me, oh, they are now going to a particular, like a club, right. you know, but it's not a church, right. it's a club. They, right. they were doing the services on Saturday. It was more like um, a mm. gathering of young people right. to just come and dance, praise God, and listen to the word of God. That was how they explained to me. And um, the kind of person I was then, mm -hmm. I was this kind of person. I was the vice president of the fellowship in school. I believed in tying hair to church, you know. I didn't really want anything hip hop, you know, jumping, that kind of gathering. So immediately my sisters told me that that's the kind of gathering you meet a lot of people, you meet prostitutes that have given their lives to Christ, you meet cultists that have given their lives to Christ. I was like, isn't it not scary to be in the midst of all these people that ah, I don't think me I want to go. I just like, so I just come, come, come. I reluctantly went and um, I saw the different people that were there. It was clear I was the youngest. Mm. So I was always pinching my sister because the way they were dancing, I felt, no, no, this is not it now. This looks like a club, you know. But then it was like, this is like a new way of reaching out to people to mm. know God. Mm. So I, I was there. They said time for first timer to stand up. Mm -hmm. I stood up and I introduced myself. My name is Busola Mukbiton, da, 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 secondary school. Then I now shipped it in that um, I was actually, I explained my journey there, that I didn't want to come here. I thought people would be like on serious set of people. You know, how can people be praising God like this? Mm -hmm. But listening to the word of God, you know, seeing people talk, it's really amazing. And I'm so excited that I came here. I was really, really a bold child. Like I could speak up in any gathering. So um, after the meeting, that was where Pastor Biodon preached. Biodon Fatou Imbo, he preached. After I finished preaching, he came to meet me after the service, after the Fatou Imbo meeting. Is the general overseer of the Commonwealth Zion Assembly. Yes, Koza, yes, is right? the senior pastor there. Yeah. But then the, it wasn't Koza. Yes, it, it was, was um, called Divine Delight Club. Right, right. Yeah. But it wasn't yet a church. It wasn't yet a church. Right. It was just like, um, and he wasn't married then, right. but he was engaged to so right. his present wife. Right. So um, that's how he, he came to me and he was like, such a bold young lady like i've never seen someone like this you know it was like wow you need to keep the fire that please can you do something in um the next meeting before i go to school he asked when i'll be going back to school mm. so i said ah, okay what can i do that i can sing i'll just try to sing not like i'm sing very well he said oh yes that's great that um he plays the keyboard that um he could he would help me out, would rehearse together, things like that. So I told my sisters and um, I felt, 
why do I have to be part of this your club thing? Mm. I don't want to be part of it now. Mm. But my sisters told me that I should not be <coughs> too judgmental, mm. you know, mm. because my thinking of Christianity then was a bit different, was kind of like solemn, you know. That was how... What they call deeper life. Yeah, sort of, you know. That's how I was mm. then. So um, I decided, okay, I went to, I can't remember the particular day of the week, mm. but my sister now took me to his house then. Right. He was living with his father. Right. The wife right. too there will be there sometimes, I guess, because that particular day she was there as well. Right. So I entered the when living room. When did your sister room. take you to his house? because I was meant to do rehearsal. Right, for this thing that he meant Yes, for, for that um, mm -hmm. next meeting yes. that I was meant to sing. Yes. So she left me there, entered the living room. He was already seated with um, the keyboard. Right. And as at then, I didn't have a phone, right. no mobile phone, mm. even my house, we didn't have any landline. Mm. So mm. it was more like, I've already told you this, just work it out, you mm. know, come mm. at that time. Right, right. So that's how I rehearsed and... Um, so this was his father's house? Yes, right. his father's house right. in the father's living room. Mm -hmm. So he asked me what kind of song. I think I even remember the song, you right. know. What song was it? I will serve you because I love you. You mm. have given life to me, something like that. So mm. I'm not a great singer. Mm. So I sang it my way and then it was like, oh great, rehearsed. I went back home. And the next meeting, I did the song. And as I was singing, someone came out to give his life to Christ. I, I got to realize the guy was actually even in cult, you know. So it was really a very um, touchy. Where did the person come out of? So From the, the congregation. So, okay, like, so, you, so you, you went to his house, you did this rehearsal. Yes. Then you did the thing the next meeting. Yes, right, I right. sang the next meeting. It wasn't a Sunday, it was a weekday. No, Saturday, right. Saturday. Right. It wasn't a Sunday service, right. just Saturday gathering, right. Saturday evening. So when you were singing, this person came to give his life to Yes, Christ, right? yes. So um, after, after the program, Everybody, different people walked up to me mm. that is like, you have that gift, that calling, mm. just keep serving God, mm. you know. Different people encouraged me. It was so clear to everyone that this girl, she's a very, very young girl, mm -hmm. you know. So um, he walked up to me and he said, wow, just keep the fire burning. That's Biodum. Yes, right. that's Pastor Biodum. Yeah. He walked up to me and he said, keep the fire burning, that I'm going to give you um, books right. and cassettes as you're going back to school, mm -hmm. just be focused, don't listen to people, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And he gave me books. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the spot there. Right. I don't, I don't remember whether he sent it down, but I, I got books from him right. and cassettes. It right. was cassettes then. Right. So um, audio cassettes. Right, right. So I took them back to school. I even showed um, my friends in school. Mm -hmm. I, I gave them the old gist about this new place that my sister took me to. And you know, that's how it was. And um, by the time I finished secondary school, mm -hmm. I returned back to Elorin. Right. And um, I was still contemplating. Should I join this church? You were not still fully comfortable. Yes, with it. yes because I went back to school. The kind of fellowship in school was totally different from what I experienced during the holiday. Mm. So it was more like I was living a dual life, you know. So I really wanted to come in terms with the particular belief that I want to flow mm. with. Am I going to be like the FCS, the way I was in school, mm. or I'm ready to join this kind of new environment? So I told my sisters, and they were like, see, this man is warded, he's now in church, it's Commonwealth of Zion Assembly. Right, by the time you came back from school, it was yes, already a church. Yes, it was now already a church. So that's how I joined the church. Mm. When I joined the church, I joined the choir. Then we were at, um, a, we're using a particular mall, Adamabola, or like that in Ilorin. Right. There was a supermarket downstairs. So I was part of the choir, I would go for my rehearsals, everything. I just wanted to serve God mm. because um, my background is, um, I'm from a polygamous family mm. and um, seeing some things play out in the family, I didn't want my life to be like that, mm. like, more or less like as the, when I was in secondary school, as I was coming out, you know all this sent forth that they are doing for you and they're telling you, you are going into the world. 
you know i was beginning to get scared of this world like so mm. i was having that mind that i want the kind of world that mm. will make me happy mm. and my since i was already a christian i just I was just like hold on to christ that's mm. all so i wanted to serve in a church you know just be zealous for god the mm. way i was already zealous in school so i joined the choir and um I wasn't talking to anybody. Mm. I would just do my own thing. My sisters were involved in self fellowship. Right. We would go for evangelism together and um But you were still in your shell, you were still afraid of this world that people that it told you to be careful about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, you know, because it was a bit difficult for me to really integrate myself into the church right. because of where I was coming from the FCS was FCS totally the different yes. yes what's it what's FCS not even fellowship of Christian students Spence, something right. like that yeah, yeah. you know so um, I joined choir and then one day they told me oh so even sing a song now lead I couldn't really sing very well but mm. I sang and um, one particular day Pastor Piotr now came to me it was like ah, that you don't like to talk, how are you? You know, you just look at me, how are you? Hope you're good and everything. Just be like, I'm fine. And then um, he started coming to my house. Right. And all of us in my family, we were so active in church. Right. When I mean extremely active in church, more like the Amukutans are so passionate about Kosa, mm. so passionate about Commonwealth. Anywhere we'd go, we'd just keep dragging everybody to this church, mm. dragging everybody, just come to church, come for self-fellowship, things like that. Mm. And we were going through our own personal family issues. Right. Quite all right. To, did it have to do with the fact that it was a polygamous family? Or yeah. What were the issues? Yeah, my, my father wasn't always around. Right. You know, and then right from secondary school, we're already right. facing financial issues. Right. Yeah. And um, while I was in secondary school, there were times I would go to school without um, provisions, right. but nobody knew. Right. I was very good at living, coping with things, mm. not discussing with people, you know. I just needed to let me study well, come mm. out of school, enter university and get a good job, mm. you know. I really, I, was, I really wanted to be there for my mom in particular. Mm because I just felt um, she had gone through a lot, you know, things like that. Um, this particular time in church, he came to meet me, that's Pastor Biodo. And then he said, um, I noticed you're always all by yourself. So you came to meet you in church? Or at yes, okay, right. like after a fellowship. Right. right. Like, um, you're always all by yourself, mm. things like that. Hope mm. you're good, mm. you know. So I said yes. So he said he was going to come to my house right. the next day. Right. Had you ever done that before? No, right. no. Wait. So it was because he said he, you wanted to find, I guess, wanted to find out more about why you were quiet. Yes, he just wanted to sort of know more about me, things right. like that, because we were always going to church. I guess um, people sensed something was wrong, like in terms of family, maybe we didn't even have money, things like that, but we never opened up to anyone. We, we would just take care of our own business. There were days we would go to church, no food, but then we'll go back home and sort out issues, you know. So um, that the next day, he came to my house in the morning, and then my mom was in the kitchen. So I told my mom that, ah, my pastor is here. He came in, he greeted my mom, and then I told my mom that, ah, my pastor says he's going to buy some things on Taiwo Road, that I should just accompany him, you know. So I remember that particular day, my mom was like, ah, Sola, which one is this one now? She said it's in Yoruba. Mm. I was not like, ah, mommy, it's my pastor now. I'm like, there's nothing, you know? So my, um, my mom said, okay, oh, no problem. Oh, greeted him. As in my mom saw that, oh, he left with me. Mm. So he was driving a white Mercedes Benz here, like the old, I don't know the model, mm. but old white Mercedes Benz. And that was where we sort of, started interacting and um, started talking like you don't say things you're always quiet what's wrong you know so he was talking I want to be a spiritual father to you so at that point 
even though in my world I'm always very mindful of people around me like when I was small because um, when I was like um, 10 one of my dad's drivers just looked at me one way I slapped the man like why are you looking at me like that right. you know so immediately I was about to just put up a guard you know but then he was just able to like just break it mm. I just want to be like the father somebody you can always interact with mm. and then really I didn't have like a good relationship with my dad like, he was always traveling you see he was yes, not always at home yes yeah. at home and then my sisters were all, were all busy running their own lives and um I had my fears, fears of all this thing of, ah, you're about to enter university. There's a whole lot for you to know about this new environment. Mm. It really felt, I felt stifled in a way, you mm. know, and mm. I was a bit glad like, oh, I have someone to interact with. So it wasn't that particular conversation that made me to open up to him, but it was more like within me, I just felt relaxed, mm. like, okay, 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 you know. He just talked and he went to buy what he wanted to buy. He dropped me back home. Then after some days again, he came to my house that, OK, he was going because the church was about to move from that particular location to another location that is like Wonderland, that's where they call it. So he would go to that site to go and see. So he took me that particular day again to go and see that place. We just talked that he's doing this. He just wants me to be talking to um, someone. And meanwhile, all these interactions, he asked me one time, do you have a boyfriend? I was like, oh, no, I don't have a boyfriend. I'm a virgin, like nothing. And he was like, oh, that's really good. That just keep yourself, you know, don't listen to all these people, even all these church boys and church choir members. Mm -hmm. So um, mm. it was good. It felt like good advice, yeah. definitely. So um, felt like someone who was supporting you, and was yeah, help, you know, listening I, to you, yeah, and, and concerned you. about yeah. me yeah. as well, yeah. you know. So um, it sort of just I became relaxed, like nothing, until um, a particular day, which was a Monday. I remember the previous day was um, a Sunday service and um, because there was no no telephone, no mobile phone. So before GSM? Yes. I didn't know and um, it came to my house. My, meanwhile, my house then was, the gates opened, the living room is where you just knock the door and right. someone will come downstairs and open the door. And this time, my mom had traveled with my younger sister. It was just myself and one of my elder sister that was at home. And my house, like a duplex, was a duplex. So big that if you're in a room upstairs down, you won't know what's going on downstairs, things like that. So I came down normal. Normally, the way I come down, it was like 6.30 to 7. It was pretty early. Right. I was still in my nightwear. I was right. wearing a gown my nightwear and I had the knock, who is that? Ah, Pastor Piotr. I was first of all like, I couldn't say anything like, what What's it this doing time? Here so early? But um, immediately I just opened the door. He just pushed me. He didn't say anything. He didn't, um, he didn't utter any word. He just pushed me to one of the chairs in my living room and I saw him like he was removing his belt. So I was like, what? He just said, keep quiet, do what I want you to do and you'll be fine. So at this point, really a whole lot was just going on in my head because it was more like someone that I had put up here that I felt was really, really concerned about me. I had already filled him in the place of my, like a father that could speak to me, you know, guide me. He was there about to do something I did not believe. And then when I was just about to react, 
it just covered my mouth. And um, when it covered my mouth, it was just like, Usola, listen to me and you'll be fine. Just do what I want you to do. I didn't struggle. I didn't struggle. I just um, left him and um, he brought out his pennies and I was wearing a nightgown. I was wearing pants, pulled down my pants and that was how he, he found difficulty to enter but he just kept, I was like grunting, I would cry, I would, I was just doing a whole lot of mixed feelings and all that and then um, he eventually penetrated, even blood dropped on the floor. And um, at that point, he, he finished what he wanted to do. He had an orgasm and he zipped up. He left me there. I just sat on the floor and he went out. So, when he went out, sorry, just hold on a minute. Sorry, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. <sighs> because the thing, this particular time, as it looks like um, something that just happened, like an event, but a whole lot are damaged within me. As in, I don't even know how to define it, a whole lot. He entered his car. All I saw was he came back and he brought Crest. What is Crest? Um, Toothpaste? No, no, a drink then. Mouthwash? No, a well, drink. Like, like, like a soft like, drink? Yeah, like a right. soft drink. Right. It was Crest. It had um, green content. Right, right. I do yeah. remember. I think I remember. Crest. Yeah, yes. so it was already opened. Right. He had opened it and he just poured it in my mouth. Why? I mean, I, do, I... I don't know. So he poured it in my mouth and I had to just be swallowing it as he was pouring, swallowing it. And he finished and um, he was now tapping me like, you should be happy I'm the one that did this to you. So, and then he left, he said, I'll see you. He left, the, but I should be happy. That, that is the, the one, one that, that did, did it to you. That is the man of God that did this to me. You should be happy that the man of God... Disvergined me, sort of. Okay, sorry, let me be sure that I get this chain of events. And I'm sorry, because this yeah. is obviously a difficult thing. Yeah, it's fine. So, so you're saying that Pastor Biodon Fatoni, when he was a pastor at this time, yes, of, he had set up this church called Koza in Yes, Illinois. he was married, the wife he had was given married. birth. Oh, and he had a child. Yes, the wife had given birth to Shindara then. Shon, oh right. A very little baby. Boy. And you, you were in the choir? Yes. That he, he had, he'd like to be your spiritual father? Yes. And so, based on that, he would come and visit you to help, you know, yeah. encourage you and support you. Yeah. And then one morning, Biodun Fatunyiwo comes into your house at yeah. dawn at 7 a.m. Yeah. And without saying anything to you, when you open the door, yeah. he pushes you yeah. onto a chair. Yeah. He tells you to shut up. Yeah. And then he rapes you. Yeah. Okay, and then he, so he says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this, but yeah, I just, it's fine. I'm sorry, and, and then he closes, he tells you to, he shuts your mouth, literally, Yeah. and then does, pen, you know, yeah. does this, Yeah. and then Finn, and then ejaculates, has an orgasm or whatever. Yeah. And then goes out, mm -hmm. gets a drink, a, a soft drink, brings, so he doesn't say anything to you about, he goes out, gets a drink, yeah. 
And you were so, I couldn't, you were so overwhelmed, you couldn't even scream. You couldn't, you didn't even, you, you just, yes, it was, yeah, you were overwhelmed. Yeah, it was, at some point, I yeah. raised my voice. Yeah. But when he told me, it, and again, at that point, you know, when I joined the church, yeah. then, and my sister used to say, oh, he used to be part of a, a cult group, something.